All right, that's our new intermission music. Uh, the, I'm Conrad Fargo. This is, the camera isn't here anymore. It's here, and I got to get used to doing. I'm just so used to jumping in, going. Aha! I'm Conrad Fargo. This is the Fargo Five. We're here with Cal Braun from El Zagel Shrine. Hello, Cal. Hello. So, Cal, um, we are moving into the Fargo Fun segment. This is where we talk about the fun and exciting things to do in Fargo, North Dakota. Now, El Zagel does a lot of fun things. Tons so of fun So I'm going to have to have uh, somebody else on from the shrine just constantly. Uh, you guys got to keep sending yep. them if you're having fun. So uh, if you don't send me more people to interview on the show, I will take that personally. All right. So I'm I'll just, I'm warning you, Cal. I will send people. I will. <laughs> you, because you guys do the, the, the zoo, or not the zoo, the circus. You guys do the circus do the every circus. year. That's yep. the big one, we the El Zagel Shrine Circus. That was just done. Yep. We just got done with that. A whole new show. It was really fantastic. Um, it, it it was yeah it was fun and then on top of that you do all kinds of events up at the shrine the shrine is way not way up north but up in yep. old north fargo up on like what is it 12 north of 12th avenue north third of 19th north. avenue 1429 Four- third street north there you go yeah and we used to go there i, I got beers there for quite a while yep. before we moved business and yep. beers Absolutely. that was a networking thing we did uh but the shrine is great i mean i think it's a hidden little gem if you can make your way up there I, it I, is yeah, go there and, and have a beer. Um, and that's where the event that's coming up, Suds and Spuds. Yes. Tell us about that. Be. All right. So the, the event is Suds and Spuds. So obviously it is a, it's a craft beer tasting event. And uh, along with that, of course, the Spuds, it's a potato theme. So we're going to have, uh, like every year, we're going to have all kinds of different potato dishes and all the fixings to go with it. So we're going to go f- everything from tater tots, French fries, baked potatoes, um, uh, twice baked, or now is there a limit on the amount you can eat or drink? Uh, as much as you can. Because well, when you say it's a tasting, I mean, so are they only giving out little cups? I mean, how yeah, how are you? It's like a typical tasting, but as far as the as far as the I don't food, know if I've ever been to a tasting. The food side goes. Yeah. I mean, it's more or less a buffet. You go through and you you pick up what you want and you you know put whatever toppings you want on all of these things fries or whatever you know um and then you can go through as many times so the only thing that's holding you back there is the line the number of people that are are there to enjoy the event well and so when you walk in so i i've been to the shrine a bunch of times so Mm -hmm. i can kind of paint a picture you've got uh it's this big loop of a driveway, and you've almost got two parking lots. Yep. And then you walk in. Uh, there's under like under a, the canopy. A, a canopy yep. there. You walk in, and then you're in this lobby when you first yep. walk in. It's like a lobby celebrating El Zagel and the Shriners because they got the guys with the hats. Yep. And then you walk in, and you've got two kind of two sections. You've got the bar, which is the bar seating and the bar. Correct. And then you have a whole event. Like center, how many square feet would you say that is? I mean, that's big. I don't even know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's like a big event room. Yeah. Um, and then you guys have space downstairs as well, we do. but we're not using that for this. Yes, we are. Oh, we, we are. Use the full. We use the full. Uh, wow. The full. It's that, ma- it's that. that many people. Suds it and Spuds is. is like. Is this like your biggest? Is it bigger than Pizza and Puzzles? Because that. You oh yeah. Use it's well bigger than that. Oh wow. But oh, wow. We we do get about anywhere from three hundred and fifty to four hundred ish. 450 somewhere there about depending on the year and the weather and the marketing and whatever. Yeah. So, I mean the food will be as always the food will be downstairs and then all the tasting stuff will be upstairs. So, it, you'll you'll do the loop upstairs. All the beer is upstairs. The, yep. Okay. Yeah, so you'll you get basically a little solo cup when you walk in the door and uh, you just walk around, and we have all kinds of breweries, and we have um, a, a young guy started a, a business at 20. He was making craft cocktails for his family and kind of like the whole simple syrup thing, and so he's got a business ju- just makes simple syrup. Oh. And so oh. he's 22 years old now. Yeah. He'll be there building some craft cocktails uh, as oh, well as great. all the breweries that you're you're used to and expect to be there so you know again we'll we'll name some of them so they get a little bit of press here as well but you know of course we've got fargo brewing we've got swing barrel from moorhead we've got um drecker um ice wind out of mapleton yeah, we've got wind, stonehome yeah. out of watford city uh laughing sun out of bismarck fergus brewing wow they're really coming uh, from all over yeah we 
we get them from all over the place. So how how long? I because I'm intensely interested. So I walk in. Yep. And my plan is to just like really drink. That's yep. that's what I want to do more than anything. I'm going to get <laughs> yep. my solo cup. Uh, wh- what's the wait in the line like? Like how long are the lines? It depends on the brewery, or yep. is it? And and that's the beauty of this event. Most of the breweries. Well, I have one particular brewer, and, and he actually um, closed shop downtown, but he is coming out of retirement to do some home brewing for us. No. Oh. And that's Sam from DCR, Drum Conrad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're pretty excited to have him brewing for us. But uh, his statement always has been, and I use this when I talk to breweries, is the fact that there are, there are a lot of craft tasting events, and uh-huh. some of them, they all they're doing is pulling handles and pouring beer, and they don't get a chance to interact with the with the attendees. Yeah. And this event, he said, is has always said is large enough that you get good exposure, but small enough that you can still interact with the people, talk about beer, do all those things that they really love. And so you know, it's just it really is nice. So you go up, and it just depends some. Some get busier than others, and you just keep making your cir- way around the circle and just keep asking for beers. You have little, there's going to be water stations available to rinse your cup, yeah. like there always are. Um, but it's fair to say you're not going to be leaving the place thirsty. No. No, if you do, it's your own problem. It's your own fault. Because it's like a solo cup. So I'm gonna, it's not a like small, these little. It's, it's a little solo It is cup. really little. It is. It's, I mean, because. You know, it's a tasting. Yep. So, but you can taste <laughs> as many for times legal, is as that for you legal want. reasons or <laughs> it, it's just for to cut down so that people like me, reasons, yeah. <laughs> just to make sure, you know, but I mean, most of the breweries we we generally tell them to bring four-ish cases of yeah. beer. Yeah. So they really need and we ask them to bring multiple varieties. So most bring um a pounder case or a whatever crowler case of eat four different varieties of beer. And this is only, what, $35? $25. $25? Yep, 30 at the door. Oh, my goodness. That's yep. very affordable. Yeah, it's reasonable. For all you can drink. And is <laughs> And is potatoes. Food. I mean, tell me more about these potatoes. I mean, I you know, I don't know that I like potatoes as much as I just like sour cream. Okay. <laughs> like, what well, are, we'll have what that. Fa- <laughs> like, obviously, you're going to have baked potatoes and baked potato fixings, but what else? I mean, it, you get much more creative than yep. that, I think. French fries, tater tots, uh, like I said, the... He call I call them really really decadent mashed potatoes, but he yeah. calls them twice baked, which oh, is sure. misleading yeah. to most people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've got kind of a picture in my like head. I said but. French fries uh, were, you know, it's just the staples are there. Yeah. And then you have bacon, sour cream, <sighs> onions, uh, cheese, nacho cheese, sour or uh, sour cream, cheddar cheese, whatever. There's any topping you can pretty much imagine chili uh, we're gonna have oh. gravy and where where does that so obviously i understand the motivation of the uh the brewers they want to advertise themselves mm-hmm. get their names out you go there oh my goodness this is really good now i need to have uh, summit for the rest of my life right is summit going to be there or they're no, there because they're from the cities right yep. they're kind of a different but we've had we've had brewers from the cities we've had brewers from um that was just the, the one that came off my yeah mind. Uh, I, but Ultimately, it just depends on what their schedules look like and their uh, desire for marketing outside of their normal area. So I, I, get, I get that they want to do the tasting, but who's mm-hmm. who's making the potatoes? Is we that are. that's the shrine? Yep. So you that's, guys, that's our group. So yep. you don't have like uh, special guest uh, chefs or anything like. Well, that. that's the funny thing. So it, it's kind of evolved over the years. We went from doing a baked potato bar to. Uh, actually having where we would get local area chefs. And, you know, it was a large responsibility. And this is pre-COVID stuff. And staffing was easier and that sort of thing. So we could get them to commit to making three to 400 small plate dishes for us. And then people would come in and that that was what the food was. But after COVID, you know, people are just struggling in a lot of ways. You know, businesses are for uh-huh. finding staff and yep. doing what Shortages they do. And so it was, really, it was really hard to get people to commit to that. So we went back to the potato bar, but we expanded it to not just baked potatoes, to whatever we decided on a whim we were going to do at that time. Um, but we still do have a... Um, we do still have a chef competition. So basically, like the... 
the Food Network show Chopped. I don't uh-huh. know if I can say that I'm here. Sure, or not. I think you can. But yeah. uh, you know, where they we put five ingredients in a box, and the potato has to be the forward uh, item that they utilize in it, and they make plates for judges, and they we the judges choose which who is going to win the trophy. For how that do you get to be a tr- How do you get to be one of those judges? Well, if you'd like to be a judge, we can <laughs> certainly say you gotta know you somebody. If I absolutely, if I just know somebody. Well, I know a lot of people. Um, let's see. Uh, I was gonna ask. Um, I, I can't remember what I was gonna ask. Um, so I'm very hungry because this is right <laughs> around lunch. I right. said to myself, let's have a radio show during lunchtime. We'll try to catch people on the drive. Yeah. And then I walk in here and I'm always just starving. Yep. Just starving. So what is uh, what's maybe the strangest thing that you're gonna have out there, or the most uh, unexpected potato dish, or is it basically just everything? You mean as far as in the well, I mean chili. Or? Well, I mean uh, chili is is definitely something I I, I wouldn't expect. Is that uh, which which is it a canned chili? Or or somebody's making chili we from make scratch? it we really? make all that stuff wow. yeah yep it, it's you know the the thing is is some of the things don't get made homemade of course you know like nacho cheese yeah sometimes some of that gets made sometimes queso it just depends on we do a lot of events over the course of the year and we get a lot of donations as far as food related items and so every year it, there's a lot of staple items but there's a lot of things that we change up as well just because of the fact that uh, we have things on hand. Yeah. And chili is an easy thing, you know, like... Because you already got ground beef because you make burgers every week up there. Yeah, that's a different deal. But, you know, as far as the... We do the wild game feed every year. Yeah. Oh, yep. In, uh, you know, February. Yeah. And so we do that in February and... Is it going to be wild almost, game chili? No. Oh, okay. No, no. But we do always <laughs> have, the like, you know, from, from the... Uh, from the people that donate the food, we have cans of beans and we have all that stuff. So See. that's something that we almost always have on hand. If not, we have some really generous donors that will always donate those items for us that work in the food industry. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a, a great, great thing for us. Awesome. All right. Well, we are going to move to our next segment, the Fargo Fresh, after an intermission. But uh, make sure to m- tell everybody, where can we even, uh, if you want to get those in advance and save five bucks, I mean, it's a deal at the door, 30 yep. bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, if, you, if you're if you okay paying a fee, look up Suds and Spuds 2024 on Facebook or Eventbrite. Yeah. And you can buy tickets right there on a QR code or right through Eventbrite itself. Uh, or you can go up to El Zagel anytime between 8 a.m., oh, well, let's call it 9, depending on what the staff has going on, uh, to 10-ish p.m. in the bar. We, there's tickets available there, and that'll save the fees 100%. Yeah. Um, it, it's hard to tell you go talk to your favorite Shriner because <laughs> we we have different groups in the in the shrine, and I the see. director's so, staff is the one is the group that's putting on this event. So not every shriner, not I every, mean, shriner, but every will shriner have would tickets. would know somebody to hook you up though directly, right? I would say they would, yes, absolutely. Well, they can just find you. They can just, just call me. Just go to. Uh, you're easy to find. Just type in Integrity First <laughs> into Integrity Google. Integrity First Insurance. And in you Google call machine. and yep. and, uh, and Cal will pick up, right? Hundred percent. And that's going to be when is this happening? In a couple April twenty seventh. From four to seven. Okay, I'm liable. Uh, to, you know, I'm on uh, high alert. My baby's coming. I'm going to have a yep. son soon. Yep. Any time between the 22nd of April and the 18th of May, it's just as likely. Cause it, it, that's what the doctor said because of our situation, a little unique. So, well, some pre drinks or some so celebratory we, yep. drinks. Whatever you need to look at it as. <laughs> if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm not, I, I like potatoes uh, and I like sour cream and uh, I love beer. You know that. So we get amazing feedback from yeah. our well, 30 from bucks. people about it. I mean, thirty bucks. Come yep. on, I spend that at McDonald's. <laughs> Easily, this is so, better quality. I think. Uh, shouldn't uh, say that. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, you can say anything. It's America. You can say anything <laughs> you want. All right. Well, we are going to go back to our intermission. We come back. Fargo Fresh. So don't go nowhere. Mm-hmm. 